What is going on, Cardano community? I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome back to the DAP Central YouTube channel. I'm your host here, Fareed, and as a part of today's Cardano scoop, I want to talk to you guys about the latest developments within the Cardano ecosystem. First things first, we're going to review the latest weekly development report in which we're going to be highlighting recent growth when it comes to Plutus V2 script adoption. We're also going to talk about a wallet amount that we've just surpassed within the Cardano ecosystem that continues to grow. And then third, we're going to dive into some recent price action. And then we're going to wrap up that particular segment by talking about the Cardano Summit for 2023, which has just been announced. Now, following those general Cardano development updates, we're going to jump into talking about Hydra and the fact that we now have a version released on the main net. Following that, we're going to talk about Ledger and a brand new partnership between Cardano and Ledger Enterprise. And then we're going to close out today's video by talking about the Midnight Sidechain, which is going to be a data protected um, sidechain being built by IOG on top of Cardano. That said, if you guys appreciate this kind of content, make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by, consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions for me about any of the topics that we're going to be talking about today, then make sure to leave those comments down below. As always, I am a single stake pool operator operating the official DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. Over the course of the months of March, which is coming to a close all the way through May, I'll be giving away the Meld and Gens tokens to delegators within the stake pool. Very lastly, we've just made it over 5 million ADA delegated, and I was actually out part of last week. And so I just want to take a moment here to say thank you to all the delegators that have continued to show me support and the channel support throughout the past couple of months. It really does go a long way, and it makes a huge difference. Now that we've got the introduction out of the way, let's jump straight into the very first topic here for today's video, which is going to be reviewing the weekly development report. As of today, we have 118 projects launched on Cardano, 1,200 builders, 8 million native tokens, almost 71,000 token policies. And this is the main highlight here. We now have more than 7,489 Plutus scripts, of which 22,000 plus are V2 scripts. So I've been keeping track of this number, I want to say, since about five or 600. As a part of the last update in middle of uh, March, that number was about 848. So since then, we've gotten more than 1,400 new Plutus V2 scripts come online over the course of the last 7 to 10 days. That's a huge bump up here, almost a 1.7x, um, again, just within a very, very short time period. So that's one of the first key metrics here that really jumped out at me. On the left-hand side, when it comes to key highlights, we now have dynamic P2P networking available on the main net. I do also want to state that the DAP Central Stake Pool has updated one of their relays to take advantage of this new P2P update or Cardano node version 1.35.6. To summarize this particular update up, this allows for the node relays and the block producers to talk amongst themselves throughout the network without the need of a centralized server. Moving down, there's been additional work on Hydra's node mainnet compatibility, which we're going to talk a little bit more about here. And then there's been ongoing discussions surrounding the SIP 1694 proposal, which will be for Cardano governance. That's going to really do it here for the Cardano development report. Next, we're going to move into something that I wanted to highlight here, which was the fact that we now have more than 4 million wallets on Cardano. Now, keep in mind that when it comes to wallets and keeping track of numbers like this, um, it can be a little tough to do so because 4,000 wallets doesn't necessarily translate over to 4, excuse me, 4 million wallets doesn't necessarily translate to 4 million users on the actual chain, right? Um, a lot of times what we see is that people or users on Cardano have more than one wallet. Some of them may be test wallets and a lot of them actually empty, right? So um, when I look at some uh, stake pools that have delegators delegated to them that maybe have retired, you take a look at those and there's like, you know, 
10, 15, or even more than that wallets connected to those stake pools or delegated to those stake pools that actually have little to no ADA in them. So while it is a huge number and a big milestone for us to reach, keep in mind that this is not the end all be all. And just to kind of give you guys a comparison here, um, we now have 4 million wallets on Cardano, but compared to Ethereum, that currently sits at 226 million wallets. So again, they're facing the same exact dilemma um, in which that a lot of those wallets aren't necessarily um, one per user. Um, but again, it just goes to show the kind of difference between um, Cardano and Ethereum when it comes to adoption. So we hope to see this wallet number continue to grow. But I wanted to just briefly highlight the fact that we have hit that milestone and that there's no going back only forward from here on out. The next update I want to talk about here is going to be the Bitcoin, Ethereum and Cardano year to date performance. Now, what I want to highlight here is going to be the fact that we have seen a huge uptrend here when it comes to Bitcoin moving from about, I want to say it was about 15 to 16,000 all the way up to about 28,000. Now it is trading at about 27,000 right now, but we have not really seen the altcoins or Ethereum really move as much as Bitcoin. If you guys are not aware, normally when we have these bigger price swings, a lot of the uh, market liquidity kind of flows into Bitcoin. Once the Bitcoin rally is over, we tend to see those kind of flow into Ethereum. And then from Ethereum, it flows over into larger caps and then smaller caps or altcoins following the two bigger players. So over the course of this last month or year to date, again, starting off in January, Bitcoin has seen a 70% gain in its price action, whereas Ethereum since January has seen a 50% gain in price action. And then very lastly, Cardano has seen a 48% gain in price action since the beginning of this year. Again, I don't think that this is the and in terms of the price rise here for Cardano in the short term, I do think that if the Bitcoin token is able to um, break over 30K, it'll just be a matter of time, given again the trailing effect that we see as people move their liquidity from Bitcoin over into Ethereum and then altcoins. Moving into the next topic here, I want to talk about the Cardano Summit. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the Cardano Summit, this is going to be a event held every single year um, surrounding Cardano specifically. So we have Cardano projects, we have Cardano personnel like Charles Hoskinson, and we've also got builders within the ecosystem in attendance at these events. Now, the first one, not the first one, but the last one that took place as a part of November of 2022 um, was in Lausanne, Switzerland, where we also even had a virtual attendance for members that were not able to make it. On top of that, there were, I think, more than 50 different cities around the world that were hosting the actual event live at their respective location. So whether you're going to be attending virtually or whether you want to attend at one of these hosting city locations, um, I think either way is fine. But if you're able to actually make it to Dubai, then obviously that would be the first option. That said, this will be taking place between November 2nd all the way through November 4th, again, with the main stage being in Dubai. As I mentioned before, there will be community led events with more information coming soon. And as always, there will be virtual attendance to make sure or to allow for everybody within the community to really see what is actually going to be going on and to view all the different presentations being presented at the Cardano Summit. So save the date and register um, using the link down below, which I'll also leave down in my description of this video. All right, moving into the next topic here, I want to talk about a layer two scaling solution or just a Cardano scaling solution, I should say, coming online here, which we've been anticipating for quite some time. So this is going to be an update here surrounding the Hydra um, heads and the fact that we now have a version live on the mainnet and we can now anticipate to actually get the full um, V1 release very, very soon. So as you guys can see here, this is going to be a post from Sebastian and it says here we have a Hydra head open on mainnet and we featured it in today's monthly review meeting on the Hydra project. From there, we plan to add more features to come with the 1.00 version for our users needs. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Hydra, it's going to be a scaling solution being implemented by Input Output Global or IOG. So it reads here from their scaling document, 
Hydra introduces isomorphic state channels to maximize throughput, minimize latency, and incurs low to no cost and greatly reduces the storage requirements for the network. Hydra provides a more efficient means to process transactions off chain while using the main chain ledger as the secure settlement layer. So protocols using Hydra will be able to basically um, deal with the actual um, transactions off chain. And all they'll need to do is bring all that finalized data on chain to actually verify it using Cardano settlement layer. Now, I just want to give you guys a brief example here. And this was an uh, analogy that Matt Nash from Meld actually used as a, one of the uh, Meld with us Twitter spaces. So he'd mentioned, you know, for people that were trying to kind of wrap their heads around how Hydra works, imagine being at a restaurant where you've got five tables of five different people. And so you've got a total of 25 people and one single waiter. The waiter is going to basically be the network and how it goes and validates uh, blocks. And so let's say that after the dinner, um, you've now got 25 people that need to pay. Traditionally, each person would pay on their own, therefore having the waiter kind of running around um, throughout the restaurant, getting everybody's bill and then kind of finalizing their transactions with Hydra. And again, this is just very loosely speaking. You could imagine that each table would deal within themselves and they would call the waiter once they've gotten everybody's bill taken care of together and they would do that in one single transaction. So instead of the waiter having to make 25 transactions as a whole um, using Hydra um, and again, this very simple an analogy, the waiter would only have to make or verify five total transactions given that the tables have kind of finalized and totalized everything within themselves first before calling the waiter over so again hopefully that gives you guys a little bit more insight there as to um, what hydra is going to be bringing and the fact that we now actually have a hydra head live on the main net moving straight into the next update here this is going to be surrounding cardano and ledger enterprise now, before I jump into the actual partnership here, I just want to highlight exactly what Ledger Enterprise is. So Ledger Enterprise provides solutions for companies that want to self-custody and secure their digital assets, whether they want to add crypto to their balance sheet or explore opportunities of Web3, DeFi and NFTs. Ledger Enterprise is there to support them along the way. So again, Ledger Enterprise being a platform for institutional adoption when it comes to adding crypto to their balance sheets. That said, the Cardano Foundation has officially partnered with Ledger Enterprise to bring Cardano to the masses. So it reads here from their latest tweet, low fees and fast transactions meet world-class enterprise security. The Cardano Foundation plus Ledger Enterprise is the perfect recipe for financial institutions unlocking Web3. Cardano is now integrated with our enterprise platform. Again, this is going to be a huge milestone here for Cardano and institutional adoption, given the fact that a lot of these bigger players will not have exposure to Cardano, and there's not going to be a direct bridge between Ledger Enterprise and the Cardano Foundation. Now, that said, if you guys are not familiar with what the traditional Ledger platform does, they actually provide a hardware wallet. I think that's what most people actually know them for right now within the space. I personally do own a Ledger wallet as well. Let me actually see if I can get it up here for you guys on the camera. There it is, right? So this is a really big, good piece of hardware here um, when it comes to crypto security. If you guys don't already own a Ledger wallet, definitely make sure to look into that. And I may just actually create a video tutorial here surrounding how to actually use your Ledger wallet. The last update I want to mention for today's Cardano scoop is going to be surrounding the fact that the Midnight sidechain will now be getting a brand new CEO moving forward. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Midnight, this is going to be a data privacy sidechain being built on Cardano. And we actually saw Charles Hoskinson, the CEO for Input Output Global, announce this sidechain as a part of Scott Fest, which took place in Edinburgh in late 2022. So it states here, former Symphony COO joins Cardano Builder IOG or Input Output Global as CEO of new Midnight blockchain project. Aaron Barak has been appointed as the CEO of Midnight, a new data protection focused blockchain protocol being developed by Input Output Global or IOG. And so what I want to do here is briefly break down this article surrounding Aaron's background and exactly what he's going to be bringing to the 
uh, Midnight Sidechain. So it states here, software research and development company Input Output Global, one of the builders behind the Cardano blockchain, has appointed Aaron Barak as CEO of Midnight, its brand new data protection focused protocol. Barak has previously held senior roles in the financial services industry. Most recently, he helped establish and served as Chief Operating Officer at Compliance Enabling Financial Services Workflow Company called Symphony. He also helped establish FINOS, which stands for FinTech Open Source Foundation, which is an organization driving open source solutions for financial services. So just based off of those last two um, brief paragraphs there, it seems like Aaron has a really strong background when it comes to financial services, which should really lend a hand when it comes to midnight. Now that we've got Aaron's background out of the way, I want to touch on these last three highlights here, which basically break down what we can expect from midnight. So it says here midnight is currently in development and midnight is a platform for global scale applications with principles and integrity. The platform or Midnight will use zero knowledge cryptography or ZK proofs and a combination of private and public computation to create a trustless ecosystem that safeguards sensitive personal and commercial data while meeting compliance needs. Use cases may include financial workflows, healthcare records, supply chain activities, and etc. So we are now actually seeing ZK proofs coming onto Cardano with Midnight. And we actually just saw the very first ZK or the zero knowledge um, proof transaction being made on the Polygon or the Matic network late yesterday. So a lot of really good progress here when it comes to ZK technology. And I'm excited to hear that Midnight will be taking advantage of this brand new feature as well. Moving into the last key highlight here for today's video, Midnight will operate as a side chain of the popular Cardano blockchain, inheriting its security and decentralized qualities while significantly extending Cardano's utility, opening up new valuable use cases for individuals and organizations looking to transact, publish, or share sensitive data. Now, if you guys are not aware, IOG has developed their own or is in the process of developing their own sidechain toolkit SDK. So what this will basically do is allow for builders outside of Cardano, as well as builders within Cardano and even stake pool operators, the ability to create their own side chains directly connected to Cardano, being able to leverage the security and infrastructure of Cardano, but while also providing their own separate ecosystem with their own native token. So once we actually begin to see this rollout in its entirety, I think we're going to see a lot more side chains kind of connected to Cardano. That said, they've already begun testing with an EVM compatible sidechain, which has been launched and is testing right now um, connected to Cardano. So this will allow for builders from Ethereum to easily port over their apps here over into the sidechain, which again is going to be backed up by the infrastructure and security of the regular Cardano blockchain that we've all known to come and love. That is going to wrap it up for today's Cardano Scoop update in which we've talked about the weekly development report, the 4 million wallet milestone, as well as the fact that the brand new Cardano Summit for 2023 will be taking place in Dubai. Following this, we talked about the brand new Hydra release on the main net, as well as a brand new partnership between the Cardano Foundation and Ledger Enterprise. In closing, we broke down the fact that Aaron Barak will be the new appointed CEO for the Midnight Privacy Sidechain. If you guys found any of the information covered as a part of today's video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you guys could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content just like this, consider subscribing. And if you guys have any questions for me about any of the topics that we talked about today, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.